start. Okay, so we move on to our next presentation. Uh, let me remind you that this year we're trying something new for the questions. So you can log into onlinequestions.org with the event ID 2147. 147 is our room number. Uh, and you can ask questions there or vote for your favorite questions. So our next, pre our next presenter, Akhil, will uh, introduce QML in the video industry. Please welcome Akhil. Thank you. Uh, morning and hello. I'm Akhil. And uh, today I'm here to talk about how in Kadian Live we are trying to uh, create videos out of QML. So let's get started. Uh, a bit about myself. I am, uh, I'm, I'm pursuing, I'm a student at Amrita University uh, pursuing my undergrad studies in computer science and uh, being a KD Canadian Live contributor for more than a year now. Uh, I, I was part of them uh, last summer as part of the Summer of Code program. And uh, I'm a part of AM FOSS. It's a student community back in my college. So it's just a bunch of students who contribute to a bunch of uh, open source software. And over the years, we had a lot of students uh, taking part in various open source programs. Uh, in various organizations through these uh, student programs. And especially if I were to say, uh, we have a lot of people in the open media, uh, especially in the media field. Uh, just to name a few, Mindfreeze, Krishna Iyer, uh, yeah, we are all from the same bunch. And yeah, uh, that's that. So let's start with the why. Why would you take QML, a language a language you would use to create UI, UI applications. Yeah, uh, QML is something you would use if you were a Qt application uh, developer. Uh, Qt is a cross-platform uh, software development platform using C++. So QML is something that you would use to, uh, that you would use to actually uh, design your application interface. Uh, QML defines the behavior and how, how your application should look like. So if I have a button on my window, QML will, I can use QML to say where, where, where I can place this button and how this button will behave and stuff like that. That's what QML is used for. So uh, QML uh, does this by, uh, you know, order it. It has a, it, it does it, it, it orders the, you know, the interface elements in a hierarchical manner. So there's the child parent thing in QML. So why would you take QML such a, it's like JavaScript. So yeah, why would you take QML to create videos? So that's, that, that's, that, that's the end result, what we managed to do in Kdn Live right now. That's a QML file, by the way, in the Kdn Live clip monitor uh, that's actually playing. And yeah, so why do it? A, passing XML sucks. And B, QML is actually awesome. So let me tell you where we do this in Kdn Live. Uh, we actually do this in the title tool. So in Kdn Live, uh, the video editor, uh, we actually have a title tool. So what we use the title tool uh, is to create title clips. Now what title clips are, they are basically <coughs> clips, of which, clips which contain text or images. Uh, which you can later, you know, uh, composite over, uh, use to composite over your videos. Suppose if you want to add subtitles or you want to add the credits at the end of your video, you use the title tool for that. So how it works currently in Kdn Live is you, uh, 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 the Kdn Live title clip is basically an XML file which describes how it should look like. And what we do in the back end is we actually pass this XML. We pass each of the attributes, text, image, we do that. And then we uh, create a Q graphics view to describe this XML and then we render it. So that's a hefty process. And uh, no one uses Q graphics view, it's depreciated. That's one reason why this process sucks. And second reason is that it's, it's, a, lot of, it's a lot of code. It's a lot of lines of code, and yeah, uh, that, 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 those two reasons why uh, it, it, it is not really that nice to do this. So second reason, yeah, so why use QML? Because uh, rendering, 
let me tell you how rendering works in QML. So uh, since Qwerty Quick 2, uh, rendering in QML uh, makes use of the cute scene graph. Now, the scene graph is a common term in the rendering world. It's a data structure which, uh, which basically represents how the Q QML item scene looks like. So as I told you, the QML, QML is basically you know, a child parent thing. So uh, the scene graph will actually order this thing in, I, 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 during the rendering process. Uh, so yeah, so that's what the cute scene graph is. Now, as against uh, traditional, you know, imperative tr uh, painting systems like QPainter, this is a much faster way to render stuff because the cute scene graph actually uh, takes uh, lesser state changes to render. Uh, say, if you have uh, if you have to render 30 uh, background images, so instead of 30 imperative painting calls, you would just do one, they would just take one call in the scene graph. So yeah, that's how, uh, that's how QD quick content is actually rendered in, uh, in the backend. So this is a big advantage because we don't really have to pass stuff. And yeah, so that's uh, QML uh, rendering. Uh, yeah, so there's a way to actually tweak this, uh, excuse me, tweak this process. So now I want you to imagine how we would want to take QML and uh, if we want to make a video out of it. So the native approach would be to you know load this QML in a QQuick window and then you know uh, then uh, call a grab window for each frame. So that's the native approach. You can just uh, you can just call a grab window for each frame that goes by and. Uh, the, 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 this one sucks because a uh, it takes a lot of time. Suppose your QML file takes uh, five minutes from beginning to end, it would take five minutes to actually render the whole thing because this thing is like screen recording. It will take each frame. And two, grab window is expensive, as you all know. It, it calls the OpenGL uh, grab pixels, so it's expensive and it's time consuming. So. What we, what, uh, how we can tweak this to make it a lot more faster is to make use of this magical class called QQ Render Control. So as the name says, Render Control, it allows you to control the, the different steps in the, uh, in, the, in the whole rendering room. So now uh, when you use this uh, class, you don't actually need that window you can actually just you know tell the renderer to actually uh, render your QML onto a frame buffer object which you can you know just uh, use it for your image later so that's what quick render control allows you to do so that's what we have tried to do we have tried to uh, load a QML file you uh, use this class and directly render render this QML onto a frame buffer object and save it so yeah and I'm not going to go uh, too much into technical because uh, it might get a bit boring. So, yeah. So uh, when you do this, you get a, you're getting obviously a lot more freedom to do it. But you you will have to handle the context and the and the frame buffer object and uh, threading and stuff like that. So that's that. And yeah. Oops. Yeah. So the stuff I just talked about. We got this idea from this blog, so you can just look it up if you are really into technical. Uh, if you're into the technical details, uh, by Andy on the Qt blog. So uh, it's 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 a great blog. We, uh, how uh, Andy actually observed that people were using the Qt API in ways that they ha that you know they weren't supposed to, and he just uh, sought out to make an example out of that, and that's the result. So you can find the code uh, there. It's, I think, production ready. Uh, that's the QM. I call it the QML renderer. Uh, it's a library. It has. Uh, you can actually even uh, test it out. On uh, you can just go QML. You go the input file uh, with the uh, QML file. You tell how many frames you want, and you can just give the output directly, and you will get those many frames. And uh, by default, be JPG or whatever you want. So you can even uh, tell uh, which format you want, and 
yeah so what uh, now we have the frames so most of the heavy lifting is done now now uh, we have taken a QML file we have uh, rendered it we have got the frames now we just need to you know combine it together and play it so yeah now MLT so Kirin live uses uh, an, uh, as its backend it uses an open source uh, multimedia framework called MLT so MLT was originally uh, it's a, it was made for broadcasting services so it's uh, loosely based on the design uh, on the consumer producer uh, design pattern so what we need here is we have Q some QML frames and we need to you know have an MLT producer so in order to you know play that QML file so yeah uh, it's not that hard really uh, I just uh, this was done around a month ago and uh, we uh, right now we have an MLT producer which can, which can actually play a QML file so uh, yeah so you can find the code there for the MLT producer if you want to uh, tweak play with it and uh, yeah uh, it's the demo yeah so you just if you want to test it out you just go MELT -E melt melt is the command line interface for uh, MLT so uh, uh, you go just uh, you just tell melt which producer to use that's QML and you tell it the input file so that will uh, just you know uh, tell you to uh, tell uh, there you go it just plays it there you can see the you can see the fr uh, frames changing there so that's uh, that's how MLT does it and uh, yeah so uh, uh, we are done with QML we are done with QML rendering we got the frames now uh, we got our uh, we are able to play it and uh, the next process the next step yeah uh, we have actually tried to we tried to put that in KDN live uh, this work is currently ongoing and uh, uh, what, we, what we've done here is, is just connect the producer to the clip monitor in KDN live so that's the uh, clip monitor you get after you you know you after you drag a QML file onto the bin so you can just play the file that thing doesn't move but it, it's playing so yeah, uh, we got so far. Uh, we have, th this is still in process because we are not there yet. Uh, the QML, uh, the MLC producer can't yet uh, animate uh, animated QML frames, just static ones. Because uh, for our initial testing, we thought well, let's start with this, and uh, it works fine so far. And uh, yeah, uh, moving on. Uh, what's next? So yeah, as I said, uh, we need animated QML support. Uh, we need uh, that's an obvious requirement if we were to create a new title tool in the future. And uh, QML, uh, obviously, having animated QML is a uh, requirement. And yeah, we, once we have that. And once you've completed the integration of the current producer and we're done with testing uh, it completely with KDN Live because so far uh, facing some issues uh, with handling it, it in the timeline. And uh, uh, we'll be looking into that soon. But uh, uh, once that is done, I suppose we could just move on and uh, uh, move on with the title tool. So uh, this is what I did uh, for my last Summer of Code program. And uh, yeah, so uh, last summer I worked on uh, creating the QML uh, renderer library. And uh, after that, the work was to create the MLT producer, and which was done a couple of months ago. And right now we are into creating the, uh, we are into integrating this producer into KDN Live. And, and yeah, once that is done, uh, we will actually uh, start to think about how we are going to design the new title tool, uh, about the about the interface, about how we're going to change it, about what things we're going to add. And uh, after that is done, we can actually uh, possibly uh, get it uh, done in maybe or maybe I don't know in some time. I can't really say. And uh, yeah, so. 
I guess I'm I'm really done. Uh, yeah. So if you have any questions. So we have one question online. So on onlinequestions.org. Uh, and it is, do you think this approach could be used for 24-7 live playout system? Well, um, it really, uh, because you could, because you are really creating frames, but I'm not sure about the performance. You could, in theory, create an MLT producer to do that or something else which is more feasible, but uh, so far what I have noticed is uh, it's not really that quick, the QML renderer, but in theory you should be able to do it because it, 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 in the end you are just creating frames and you just need to play them. So I'm not sure about the feasibility, but maybe. Yeah. Next question, how do you manage video rendering time on QML side? How do we manage uh, video rendering time on QML side? I didn't really get that question. Uh, well, uh, uh, we ha uh, suppose if we have a static QML frame where we really don't have animations, you don't need to worry about the time it takes. Uh, rendering time, okay. Uh, all right, the time it takes to render, I guess. Uh, the, yeah. Is you want to start an animation of this frame or this frame, how do you manage to take Oh, all right, all right. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Ah, uh, yeah, the, all right, yeah. Well, the approach right now, how it works is we can just, there's an animation driver. So we have actually, uh, we have a custom animation driver, which we have overridden. So if we want a certain frame at a certain point of time, what we do is we just advance to that point of time, and we get that frame. That's how we do it right now. That may not be efficient, but we are getting there. Yeah. Any other question from the floor? No? Raise your hand. Yeah. Uh, aside, aside from like title sequences, do you see this potentially as something suitable for like over the shoulder graphics or like banners and you know, something that, you know, more oriented around like real time uh, presentations as opposed to like post office? Uh, so the question is, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, the question is if we can use this approach to actually uh, for more a wider range of applications such as presentations or uh, banners or stuff. So yeah, the answer is definitely a yes because uh, you have the entire QML spectrum which you can use to design stuff. So uh, I don't really, I didn't really face a limitation till now because. We are rendering using the Qt scene graph, so there is no uh, limitation per se of what we render. So if we can render QML successfully, we can actually connect it to anything we want to. So yeah, the answer is yes. Should be able to. Yeah. Another question? No? Well, thank you, Akil. Thank you.